Again, I like to sleep butt ass naked. And for anybody out there that's like, ew, you sleep naked, hell yeah, I do. And if you don't, you need to try it because it's a freeing, amazing experience. And you know what? The last thing I want to do is get tangled up in like my own pajamas. That's true. Ooh. Right. Right. I got a podcast! Add to the add to the no, no, no. <laughs>
It is what it is. It was interesting, though. It I, was kind of silly. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was, um, was Nope. I saw that twice. I haven't seen it yet. What? You've I wanted seen to see Fall and not Nope? Okay, it's, shit, it's mostly because my friend has already seen it. Or like most of my friends have already seen so it, they, so like, it's cancel like cancel it for you, or yeah. not like cancel it, but like well, it's just like then we end up it. seeing like some bad show because they've already seen that one. Oh, I just need to go by myself. I, I really want to do more things by myself. I want to see Pearl and Barbarian. <gasps> I do want to see Pearl. I saw a trailer for it, but I'm like scared. I originally did not know what the hell Pearl was about. Like, no, me neither. I saw X, and I was like, I feel like I saw X so long ago that I forgot that Pearl was a character. So when I was seeing What's the X, X, like the first movie okay two. i guess i don't know anything okay because so i just recently saw an edit of pearl and that's what made me like oh this is fierce so you know um how do i even describe it like x that movie where they're like basically like adult film stars and they go to that random ranch then like a whole bunch of crazy stuff okay. starts happening well like the crazy stuff is basically happening Sorry to spoil everything, guys. If you haven't seen X, don't listen to this next part. Actually, it doesn't matter. If you haven't seen it, you haven't seen it. Sorry yeah. to spoil. But basically, Pearl is like this old grandma on the farm. And she's like obsessed with these adult film actors because she's like, I'm so old and sex deprived. I want what they have. And she ends up just like killing all That's of them. That's what it's a Yeah. And then the girl who like plays the main character is now playing the psycho grandma who killed everyone. So she's playing Pearl now. That sounds like a more real, like, The Visit. Do you remember The Visit? That movie, like... I only watched the trailer, and then I had the nightmares. Visit? I was, like, too young. For The Visit? Yeah. I, I never watched it. I feel like Which is, like, get in the oven to clean it, sweetie. Like, girl, be for real. <laughs> like, That's, like, they really didn't Hansel catch on. and Gretel. Okay. I feel... Didn't Hansel and Gretel, didn't they, like, get shoved in an oven, or, like, the witch wanted to eat them? Maybe. No, she did. Uh, well, I'm not saying they that did it, like but I just don't know. I don't remember. Did you read Hansel and Gretel growing up? No. Like, okay. Girl, I had a Veggie Tales fantasy childhood. You know what I mean? Oh, it's because didn't you go to Catholic school? Yeah, like a private Christian school in Oklahoma. So did I. <gasps> Until what grade did you go to Catholic school? Until. I think ninth, and then I was homeschooled, like online school. Oh, I went to Catholic school up until the sixth grade. Oh. Um, I actually, I actually had to leave Catholic school <laughs> because some kid tried to stab me with a pair of scissors, and then the principal at my school was like, "Oh, why don't we just suspend this kid for two days? Not like expel a kid who tried to murder a child? I don't know." So then my mom was like, "No, I'm gonna send you to public school." But did you feel? Ooh, like I feel like the squeak. squeak. Yeah. (laughs) Do you feel like going to Catholic school like sheltered you in any type of way? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Like there was literally only like one worldview. There was only one type of person and it was so like, I feel like I didn't know anything. I don't know if like I'm allowed to say this on the podcast. So just let me know if I need to like cut this out. But like my third grade, actually I won't even say the teacher because like I don't need anyone from my hometown coming at me crazy. But I feel like I started being like a little mm, suspicious of Catholic school when one of my teachers were like, oh, well, Hitler could have gone to heaven if he was like sorry for his sins on his deathbed and handed his life over to God. And I was like, "Mm." there was so much shit that went down in like Christian schools, like actually so much. that I feel like no one really talks like I had. I found out about Carpal Tunnel because of my Catholic school's uh, computer teacher. And she was so monotone and, like, mean. It was terrible. I feel like I only had one good teacher. She was, my, like, my history teacher. And mm-hmm. she was the most, like, progressive person there. Still not progressive. Like, it was yeah, Oklahoma it was, and it was a private Christian school. Oklahoma. But, like, mm-hmm. she didn't hate gay people. And she actually said it once, which I think she got in trouble for. <laughs> okay. Yeah. LGBTQ rights. Come on. Woo! Yeah. No, I love it. I just, I remember... I feel like Catholic school is like one of those schools where teachers used to get away with like physical abuse and now they kind of just get away with like mental abuse, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because I knew my teachers couldn't hit me, but they were like, were your teachers ever like really gaslighty? Like I remember my one teacher, um, I had so many problems with this teacher. I can't even get into it. First of all, I broke my wrist the summer before entering fourth grade Mm. and we had to write in script, like script handwriting. Oh, yeah, I did handwriting. And I think I was like the last year. I oh, I need you to imagine me with a broken wrist. Yeah. She didn't like me because my handwriting was messy. I had a broken wrist. 
how am I supposed to write properly with a broken wrist? And then she went about giving everybody in my fourth grade class cute little nicknames except me. And then when my mom had to go into a meeting with her, my mom brought that up. And my teacher at the time was like, well, it's not my fault. I can't come up like with a nickname for Spencer. Bitch, you gave Monica the nickname Panda. If you can give Bitch. a girl named Monica a nickname like Panda, you can give me a cute nickname too. Sorry, girl. I feel like I've been like holding No, down yeah, for so you long. needed to let it out. I had to let that one out, yeah. No, literally. Sorry about that. Sorry Wait, about that did they allow like spankings at your school? No, did they allow spankings at Yeah, it was Oklahoma. In <laughs> Oklahoma, girl, you could do anything in Oklahoma. It's like really scary. Um, like they're living in like the 60s. Oh, well, I mean, like, my my mom had a friend when she was in Catholic school got, like, locked in a closet, but. That honestly sounds worse. Well, like, that's, like, a long time. Like, a like versus, like, well, did you have a clip? A clip? Like, we had, like, a yardstick with different colors, and if you got in trouble, they'd be, like, move your clip. <gasps> I actually, real talk, we didn't have clips. We, <laughs> we had those, like, traffic lights. And, like, if you were, like, bad, you would go to, like, yellow, but you could go back to green. But once you were in the red zone, you were out. Like Oh, you, you could, like, get better. Like, you could go. Yeah, but, like, once you were in red, you couldn't. And I remember I was doing so good in school. Like, so, so good. And then this one kid was talking to me in class, and I was like, stop talking to me. I don't want to get in trouble. And my teacher made me put my clip to yellow. I sobbed my eyes out so hard I threw up. Yeah, one time like I got I moved. Up in class. The clip literally had like five colors. It literally, it was so random. It was like yellow, red, blue, black. It literally went so crazy. And you would have to like, if you got all the way to the bottom, you'd have to like go to the principals and they would like talk to you. That's ridiculous. I thought my principal was going to talk to me one time because she like grabbed her finger and she was like, come here. And she just gave me cookies. Really? But I'm like, you couldn't have led with that. Like, she was like, come here. I would have been And it like, was like, girl, okay. actually, I'm literally like eight years old. Like, I, w I feared for my life. Like yeah. whenever I got called down to the principal's office, the only time I ever got called down to the principal's office in Catholic school was when, well, this was bad, but like, <laughs> I like broke the urinals. Um, <laughs> I was in the second grade and I was like, wouldn't it be funny to like keep pressing the urinals and like make a waterfall? Like this looks cool. And then they wouldn't stop. And Honestly, then, like, I would have done the same. I flooded the bathroom. I like flooded the bathroom and <laughs> I, like, left the bathroom, and I was like, no one's going to notice. Why was there always urinal drama? Like, I didn't know that was a thing until you mentioned that. Really? In fourth grade, they came to our classroom, and they were like, somebody shit in the urinal. I know it was one of y'all. <laughs> well, they didn't. They pooped. Like, duh. Yeah. Like, we were but, in fourth grade. Oh, my goodness. But apparently, I think it was one of the second graders, but our principal was like, I know it's one of y'all. No, I, I got in trouble because I was the last one to use the bathroom. And also, I feel... <laughs> you want to know how they found out it was me? How? Um, Because <laughs> my... The bottom of my shoes got wet, Girl. so there was, like, a trail leading <laughs> into my classroom. And um, when I got into my classroom, like, it literally led a trail to my seat. And they kind of just, like, walked into the classroom and followed the trail. And they were like, Spencer, do you have something to tell us? And I was like, no. And they were like, anything about the bathroom? And I was like, no. And they were like, let's try this again. And I was like, okay. Let's go. Girl, they really could get anything out of us. They would just keep asking. Yeah. And also, did they like, oh, also, speaking of Catholic school, just like dive right back into that. One more quick question about that. Did they like not take your health seriously in Catholic school? Oh, not, not like Not just like mental health, but like physical health? No, they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. When I was in Catholic school, um, what's it called? I had a 103 fever. Um, I had a massive migraine. And I was freezing, so I had my hands in my shirt. And my teacher, instead of doing the normal thing and being like, my teeth were chattering, and I was telling her I have a migraine. Instead of doing like the normal thing a teacher would do, which would be like, I don't know, send a child who looks pale and shivering and teeth chattering to the nurse's office, yeah. she instead said, take your hands out of your shirt. And I said, I'm freezing. And then she moved my clip to red, like the red on the traffic light. Girl. And then at one point she ended up leaving the classroom and we had like an aide come in while she was gone. Um, and the aide looked at me and said, why aren't you at the nurse? I went to the nurse, I had 103 fever. Oh, that's tea. And then I ended up having to go to the hospital that night. And then when I came back to school, you know when like your mom's kind of like, I don't know if your mom ever did this, but they kind of, like give you a monologue to say to your teacher and it's kind of like through them, but you kind of ad lib your own stuff. Well, I went to my teacher the next day and my mom literally just told me to tell her like, next time 
I say I'm sick. Please send me to the nurse. So I went to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, I went to her and I said, next time I tell you I'm sick, you need to listen to me because I almost died. I was in the hospital and like, it's not okay that you wouldn't let me go to the nurse. That's and so you true. put my traffic light to red. What I did like she say anything? Badass. She was like, I'm so sorry. And then she treated <laughs> me differently for the rest of the year. Oh, wait, no, that's good. I think real. she like, I, I think she like had like some. Oh, yeah. Like, she didn't want to get. Yeah. She didn't want to get fired. And she also probably felt really bad that like she almost killed a student. Yeah, true. How was your move to L.A.? It's interesting because I feel like there's like, I don't even know how to say it, like a honeymoon period where you like first move somewhere mm -hmm. and everything's new. And I think it's with anywhere you kind of get not sick of the place, but just like you get used to the place. And so most of the things that used to be exciting aren't exciting anymore. I completely agree. So it's like when I first moved here, the first like six months were so fantasy and it was so amazing. And then after and it's not that I like hate L.A. now. But it's like it's like you're used to it. Yeah, like, I don't really do like, like crazy things anymore. I treat it kind of like a random suburb and just like you just go to it. parks and like read books and play Fortnite sometimes. Sorry, I just saw my life <laughs> flash before my oh, eyes. Oh girl, it's Jesus. the coffee. It's so it's good. The co it's yeah. so yum. It's so, so yum good. delish. Yeah. I was actually gonna say I feel like when I was like visiting LA for Halloween or yeah. even that one time I came for. Um, Emmy's birthday and even when I came here to look for apartments like it was so fun like it was so crazy and I feel like it's because when you're visiting you kind of view it as a vacation yeah so you like feel like you have to do something every day exactly and then when you live here you're like oh let me shower and brush my teeth and like yeah. get to work and then like everything didn't seem as like yeah ro you know when like you get into a relationship or like you start liking someone and everything's like rose colored goggles that's what they say yeah that's what i feel like it is like before you move somewhere you're like oh my gosh like i'm so obsessed with this place and then you get here and you're like oh like the air quality is terrible yeah <laughs> like sometimes I you go outside and it's like smoking a pack of five cigarettes i yeah. think they've said that maybe i'm just pulling it out of my ass i don't know no it's definitely terrible also <laughs> driving down the highway like i I love like driving down the highway with my windows open and I have never been somewhere where I drive down the highway and my eyes are watering and yeah. my nose hurts from how like, just like the, sm first of all, it's not even like the smell. It's just like the actual the pollution yeah. in the air here. Like guys, I'm not joking. Um, survival of the fittest like if you live in los angeles and all of a sudden like every country every place like had poor air quality people in california they'd be at like the top of survival ratings yeah. because the air quality like here is terrible i literally go for hikes and i'm like i normally wouldn't be out of breath but like two steps and i'm like breathing so heavily because it's like grasping for whatever oxygen is left when like when did you actually decide to like move here Cause I feel like a lot of people is like out on a whim. Yeah. No, like, honestly, I never really, I feel like when I moved here, it was like very like quick and I didn't consider a lot of things. Oh yeah. Like air quality, but I don't think anyone really considers air quality when they move. No, that's so true. I feel like for a while at least, which not as much now, I feel like influencers can kind of be wherever. Yeah. But especially when COVID was kind of like winding down a little bit, everyone was like, Oh, LA is the place. Like that's just where I have to go. Like it didn't even feel like, an option, option like where it's like oh i need to go here or here it was just like oh you la to. duh yeah. like so i visited for two weeks and then Wait, I was and how like, old were you when you like did that? i was 18. so you were 18 when you moved yeah i was still in school oh, oh i yeah, like you were i was still in online in yeah holy crow i like barely finished i was gonna drop out and then i was like maybe that's not a great idea and then you got did you get your like diploma from high school i guess i don't have it it's somewhere i mean probably virtual it's online who knows i think i decided to move to la when i was like six like in my brain at oh least. Yeah, yeah like i always told my mom that like my mom was always like why not new york city and i was like no like i feel like growing up in new jersey especially like on the east coast i feel i feel like if i didn't grow up on the east coast maybe i would have moved to new york city yeah but because new york city was always so close to me especially living in new jersey there was something in my brain that was like i like i visit new york all the time yeah like i i don't need to live here because it's like why would i live in new york when i can just like visit my mom and visit New York. So I was like, why don't I just like move to LA? Exactly. But yeah. do you, n I know we're talking about like, I guess the rose colored goggles are like kind of like that spark fading, but has there been like anything else that I feel like you don't like about LA or like you personally don't like about living here? 
Honestly, I hate, it's so random, but I hate like the infrastructure. Like you go to New York and you can like ride the subway and take the bus and it's like great and amazing and you get places quick and you mm -hmm. can walk. Here it's like, if you try to walk, there's not even a crosswalk at a lot of places. That's so true. Which apparently we used to have like a streetcar system. Here? Because I watched tons of videos about it. Yeah, like way back when. And then GM like came in and was like, oh my God, we want like everyone to have cars and they wanted to like take over it because money and capitalism and whatever. Yeah. And so that's why they have like all the buses now because they got rid of the streetcars and changed to buses, oh. which just gave us horrible traffic and horrible. Yeah, um, there's traffic all the time. Yeah. I'd, I've never in my life gone onto a highway at 11 p.m. concerned about whether or not there would be traffic. Yeah. No, you just go like it's so crazy how you go like a short distance and it takes it's so like, long. Exactly. And even like on top of that, like I feel like here traffic happens almost all times of day. Like there's no. Yeah preventing it at all but um i guess another question i have for you is what do you think is not different in itself about i guess the environment here but the people here compared to oklahoma it's interesting because i know there's like a thing about la people and everyone's like oh my god everyone in la is like they have these horrible intentions and they're like totally different from everywhere else mm -hmm. but honestly i feel like it's just everywhere there's like a certain amount of people that it's just like oh you're not gonna mesh with them and yeah like you don't have similar interests and i feel like the first couple of months living here it was like hard finding the like people the that you people. yeah that you like mesh with because in the beginning you just kind of like befriend whoever you can uh, yeah. just because it's like a new place mm -hmm. and then after like six months i found like friends that i'm like really close with still and i love it i feel like for me at least like being in new jersey everyone i don't know if it's like an east coast thing but everyone is super like blunt like to your face um and yeah i mean to bounce off what you said i definitely agree with the whole um finding your group i don't really think it's a matter of like oh there are like shitty people all over la there are shitty people everywhere. yeah exactly it's yeah. just like finding the right group of people and it's like I feel like a lot of people saying that there are shitty people in LA, like everyone here is shitty, are people that haven't grown up here. Cause yeah. it's like- And they haven't met, they, they just haven't met the right they people. They haven't met the right, like if you just grew up here, you would have found a group by now, yeah. but like you moved here, but- Cause there's so many people in LA. That are, so but, saying that everyone's bad, it's it, like, it's such a large population. And it's like, like I feel like at least finding the right group of people is important, but also like finding like-minded people are important yeah. too. Cause I, um, when I moved here, my like biggest, con not like my biggest concern, but like, again, being from New Jersey, everyone's like super blunt in your face about their intentions. So like, if I didn't like you, like you wouldn't be here. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's like, I feel like here, the one thing I, f I don't necessarily like about it. And I wouldn't even say it's about LA, but more like the industry we're in Yeah, yeah. is everything is so business where it's like even going to like a birthday party it's about appearances yeah and it's not about like having fun and like going to parties i i feel like i talked about i feel like i have talked about this with you before but people will be like oh this party's so boring and it's like no it's not like you guys are boring yeah sorry but like you guys are all standing in circles not talking you're only talking to like your little group and it's like you're all concerned about other people looking at you it's like i don't no, give a yeah. shit when and I used to go to parties a lot, it was always about like, oh, who's like the biggest person here? Like the person with the most followers, like everyone would be walking around like, oh, Charlie Dimulo's here, or, like Avani's here or yep. someone. And it was like, no, one. they're literally a person. Like all of these people are just people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes people are just over idolized and meeting them is so like, oh, all it's these people like, are just like normal. people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I even told um, Brittany, Brittany Broski about that. Like I was, I told her, I think like, a few months ago we were talking about like social media and how like our lives are kind of like all unfolded because yeah. of it and i was telling her that when i was first starting on tiktok like she was already like blowing up yeah and it was so odd when we became mutuals and actually like met one another and like talked to each other because it was so strange for me to separate like this i'm a fan of you mentality into oh my gosh like we're friends and like yeah. you're a human being and like you're a great person on and off camera but it's like so strange meeting people that i guess like you've seen online but like you also really enjoy their content yeah and getting to know them outside of like that content space which i thought was like crazy for me at least i feel like i've had that experience so many times where it's like you watch someone and then you actually meet them and it's so interesting just because 
also a lot of times you only see like the really positive and like amazing things that these people are doing but like 80 percent of the time Mm -hmm. like what we're not posting is just like us sitting around and like reading a book eating lunch and dinner and like literally watching netflix or just like like it's not that exciting like at all if we were like watched 24 7 i feel like people would be so bored because i do so many like I don't do anything like that I do a lot. I, I mean, like I enjoy doing things alone and that's what got me into like drawing. By the way, everyone, this art back here. I do all of that. Woo-hoo. Talented, talented. I feel like we're having a regular conversation I would have with you on your couch. Yeah, that's true. And like we're in our. Pe- See, this is why, by the way, everyone, it's a requirement on this Spencer podcast forced us all to wear pajamas. Yeah, we're going to be comfy, cozy. And I had to throw this together because, girl, I sleep in underwear. I know that's TMI, but like, girl, oh, no, podcast. I sleep butt ass naked. The point is to overshare. Like, I'm so hot. I'm such a hot sleeper. You are so hot. Girl. Slay. I sleep with one sheet. You know, like when you go to a hotel, there's like seven sheets. I like peel them all back. Like, it's literally a banana. And I'm like, girl, I got to get this one little sheet where I can like burn. And I have like a fan pointing on yeah. my body when I sleep. And this is my problem. So like, I'll like move the sheet. I, okay. So like, I'm scared of like the demons Like, the scary, like, sleep paralysis demons. Yeah. I mean, I don't have sleep paralysis, but, like, I've had it before. And the one time I had sleep paralysis, my feet were, like, out from the covers. And I saw, oh, my God, I saw this, like, old woman in the corner of my room, like, crawling to me. And I actually felt tears rolling out of my eyes because I was petrified. I was like, this is my last day on Earth. Like, let me just, I'm not, I I, I'm agnostic. I don't know if there's like a God out there, but if you're real, time to pray because this is my last breath. Yeah. I was ready to pass away. No, it was like just a really bad like sleep paralysis experience. And now I always have to have my feet covered. And for some reason, I cannot sleep without my feet covered. I don't know why. Like my well, That brain, makes sense. It just feels like it's too much. I, if I feel out. like I'm not safe. That's yeah. where I, I don't feel safe. And then I realized if I sleep with socks on, I can have my feet out. But who the yeah. hell likes to sleep with yeah. socks on? Like I like to, again, I like to sleep butt ass naked. And for anybody out there that's like, ew, you sleep naked. Hell yeah, I do. And if you don't, you need to try it because it's a freeing, amazing experience. And you know what? You, I feel like we have enough problems getting like tangled up in sheets. The last thing I want to do is get tangled up in like my own pajamas. That's true. But I do disagree. I sleep with a shirt and underwear. That's it. Because that's like that's my groove like i've tried everything and it's like everyone has their thing and sleeping is so vulnerable it's so weird nobody talks about that well when the vampire or maybe everyone does when, I don't know. when the vampire diaries when they were giving me the when that show gave me back problems i would sleep with clothes on because no, i'm yeah, like yeah. super body conscious um yeah. and like have body dysmorphia and i was like if i can't even look at my body right now stuff can't yeah, either no one else can. so i would wear like the baggiest clothing yeah i could possibly find too bad that's probably also why i barely got any sleep watching the vampire diaries oh true, true. um because like i was wearing baggy clothes one two i was sleeping in like a really un- i feel like i would sleep like this oh yeah no did, like did it hurt your neck oh yeah i always have like neck problems i've tried so many pillows really yeah i don't know why it's just like i always like i try to sleep like on my stomach but also like to the side and it's so weird what side Usually, actually, I switch. I usually do, like, the left side. But, like, sometimes if it's not feeling right, then I, like, switch back Wait, over. Wait, left? It's usually wherever the window is, and I don't know why. Wait. Maybe it's something spiritual. Wait. Like. This is an like L, this. right? Like this. Oh, like left. left. Yeah. What did you think I meant? I. T- oh, wait. To the viewers at home. Well, it's still left. Okay. To the people that this aren't viewing. Like that when are listening. I sleep. Oh, I also sleep on my lap. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I did have a bad experience one time when I was at a hotel, like totally off topic, but when you were talking about sleep paralysis, yeah. not even related to that. I don't know why I said that, Okay. but I was staying at this hotel <laughs> and for some reason I looked on Google maps, like right before I went to bed uh-huh. and I saw there were like cemeteries everywhere. It was New York. So girl, let's be for real. There's cemeteries everywhere. Every, like, like New York city. It's like over a grave, yeah. like everywhere. Yeah. But for some reason, I convinced myself that, like, the hotel was haunted because it was creaking. Because mm-hmm. it's, like, a tall building. So yeah. it's going to, like, move and whatever. So, But I was dumb. And I was like, oh, my God, there's ghosts. So I would leave the, like, shade cracked open at the bottom. I'm like, it'll let the, like, the spirits light. pass through. Oh. I don't know, like, the validity of I that. I thought you were going to be like, oh, it's letting the light in. So, like. No, it just made me feel better. And I was like, oh, okay, they can, like, get through. Do you sleep with a nightlight? No. Okay, I used to, like, for so long. I used to. But now I need, like, total darkness. Yeah, I used to, too. I only sleep with Oh, the dark. yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, 
I would not have a salt <laughs> lamp next to my bed that I keep on only when I go to bed because I hate the dark. That's something kids do, and I'm 21, and I don't, I don't need a nightlight. Honestly, I actually have two nightlights, one in my bathroom and also one in my actual bedroom, and I have the one in my bathroom because, you know when you wake up and you can't look at light? Yeah. I have a, I have a motion sensor, like, nightlight. So I keep my bathroom door closed, and then if I open my bathroom door, it just turns on, and it's not that bright, and I can just do my business, and then I'm like... Wait, that's smart. Have you ever fallen asleep on a toilet? No. Me neither. Yeah. I have a really good way to go to sleep. I um, have some tea, nice herbal tea. Um, I have it in, like, this really cute uh, mug shaped like a bowl. Mm. And I just like sip on it, like. How is it more shaped? Like, <sighs> what makes a mug shaped like a bowl? Aren't all mugs like? Um, a bowl. <laughs> so it's a mug. So it's a mu- it's a bowl. Right. But it's a right, right, right. 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 As you were, As you I have was. your herbal tea. I'm having my herbal tea, and I'm like, ooh, wait, like, feeling a little feeling a little spicy and then I'll like draw a little bit. I made last night, me and Emmy had some tea together and you know what we did? We made pottery clay and I made like lips, which I, th- I think they're so cool. I still have to paint them. Um, but after, um, after it was like all like done, I was like, oh, so tired, gotta go to bed. I went upstairs, had a little snacky snack and then I was like, Mm-hmm. I felt amazing, but at first, I of course I had to watch Roswell, my new favorite show. True, what's that on? It's on Netflix. Oh, true. Surprise. I canceled my. Net- yeah, I know you yeah. canceled your Netflix account. Well, the viewers don't know. The listeners don't know. Oh, sorry. We chatted for like an hour before, before this. this, so Spencer yeah. knows that. Like We've already up caught up. Yeah. Sorry, guys. You Netflix is too expensive. I, I, it's literally like sixteen dollars, and all I watched was Stranger Things. I have Netflix, but like, I don't have Netflix. Like it's actually it's I'm shared. allowed to say this. It's yeah. my mom's Netflix account, and you know what? Yeah, I use my mother's Netflix account. Like no, that's real. I pay rent. If I, I saw should the at passcode, least I, would, I yeah. should at least be able to use my mom's Netflix. The only thing I hate about that though is that my mom is like super convinced that someone's just gonna hack into her Netflix account, so she changes the password once a month, girl, and then forgets that I'm also on it. So I have to text her and beg for the password. And then she's like, Spencer, <laughs> she'll be like, Spencer, I can't say it on the phone. And I'm like, why not? And she's they're like, gonna God tap forbid it, they're someone gonna hears wire. me. And I'm like, mom, who the, I was like, I'm like, who the hell is going to hear you in the basement at home? Like the cats. That's so true though. Like, I feel like all of our parents and grandparents are like pretty paranoid, which I get that honestly. Cause I'm like, after COVID, I wonder if we're going to have like these things that like our kids are like, why do you do that? Are your parents from Oklahoma? My dad's from Oklahoma. My mom's from Oregon. Oh, no way. I love Oregon. Uh, all my family's Oklahoma from New Jersey. All my from New Jersey? Yeah, unfortunately. Every time I think about New Jersey, I like have like like drawbacks to Starbucks. And I get like like any time I think about it. But I mean, like I drink it here. But any time. It's true. It's like, it, it's like, it's like whiplash. Yeah. Like any time, you know, when like, I feel like so I get in the mindset, like I go into a Starbucks and I hear all the things and I'm like, I wonder what they're doing. Like, what's their like drive through time? What's the, like, how long, wait, I can't I, not. Did, I already asked you this. How long did you work at Starbucks for? I didn't even work there a year, but I worked at Baskin for two years, which is, that was something else. I worked at Starbucks for three. Damn. Yeah. I, wor- I started when you I was You got the 16. ins and outs. But I started when I was 16 because when I worked there, it was like the only job you could get as a minor. Really? Yeah. But, um, fun Fun freaking fact, everyone. When I was working at Starbucks, when you're a minor... Did they break child labor laws? Oh, why yeah, is they that, like, did. More, like, you're not allowed, unless you're 18 years old, if you are a minor at Starbucks, you're required every shift to get two 15-minute breaks and a half-hour break. Why was I only getting a 10 and a half hour? Like, yeah. why... Wh- and, and it's supposed to be limited time. At least in Oklahoma, it was supposed to be like limited time. You could only work a certain amount, like on school days, and then on weekends. On you could school only work days, a few I was hours. only allowed to work four hours, and on like the weekdays, I think I wasn't allowed to. I mean, weekends, I wasn't allowed to work past like six. You know what's tea? Baskin was so sketchy. 
like in the sense that like Starbucks was very well put together and they had like a sheet of like this is what you do and like these are all the rules and how everything runs mm -hmm. Baskin literally showed up nobody was there besides the cake decorator and she was like okay she just put me on the floor and like had me scoop shit. you didn't get training no my training was serving customers okay and so then i just kind of learned along the way but i feel like that's like with almost i mean like that's true but starbucks was job. like official I, uh, girl, the training at I, least for mine they literally had like a whole week i mean i sat in Baskin. front of a computer and oh, then true. after he, the only thing i didn't like about like the starbucks training was like they're like okay we're gonna teach you how to make a latte a cappuccino a frappuccino and a refresher and then you get on the floor and it's like i would like a venti pumpkin cream cold brew uh, with blonde shots this on the third and I'm like they did not extra teach me caramel how to drizzle upside down I'm like they did not teach me about all this yeah I'm like what the hell is this speaking of orders what's like the strangest order you've gotten working at like either Starbucks or Baskin Robbins Ooh. Uh, if you can remember I'm trying I, to think there was this girl that I think got a cappuccino every day but like didn't want foam or something which didn't make any sense that's to a us. freaking latte girl yeah but we couldn't correct her because like Sorry. the thing about Starbucks sometimes there's customers that you have regulars like every day at like five in the morning and you just don't correct them because if you do like the managers will be like okay this is the person just do this and we can't correct them because like they'll get angry I had I had a customer I I think I hold on I can remember the order too hold on I have to close my eyes Okay, her name was Dina. Love you, Dina. She was such a sweetheart. Um, we were we were close like that. Don't oh, worry. Oh yeah. yeah that's um, she actually when I was like first blowing up on TikTok, she would come and be like, "I love your videos." She was like so adorable. Okay, but Dina would get a venti, uh, like regular coffee frappuccino. She would get typically it used to be an extra pump of frap roast but then she ended up getting it with an extra pump of frap roast and a splash of cold brew i believe she got it with two percent milk and then you had to it was like a certain amount of ice like it had to be the perfect amount of ice blended twice and then we had to make our starbucks like cold brew whipped cream oh yeah and cold brew whipped cream was that a thing before i worked there or Probably something? after. How long did you, when did you work there? How old were you when you left? Oh, shh. I don't remember. I feel like maybe when I was 18. Oh, then it was like before you worked there. Oh, Because true. we used to have like the cold brew whipped cream. And she would also occasionally get uh, like a very small splash of mocha. How do I remember that? Like, I'm I a genius. Well, now that you're mentioning, I forgot like some weird things. I think this one was actually kind of normal, but getting butter and people's coffee, never knew that was a thing. Instead of like cream, we would like undo butter because we had like baked goods and stuff. So like this guy would come and every day he'd get two things of butter in his coffee. And he always told us like, try it. He's like, once you try it, you'll know. We didn't try it. If I told you some of the Baskin shit that went down, you would not. Okay. So what would you say is like your strangest, like, um, Experience. customer experience like, okay it's not a customer one but i have to say this one okay no tell me the way it was just like so random how everything worked there we kind of were all managers we never had a manager mm -hmm. there was like two of us usually did that just like ran around and did things and closed and opened there was one time where our boss had us come in which we did this like willingly so i don't want to say like this was an issue yeah but he had us come in like after closing at like 11 p.m <laughs> excuse me and we stayed till like 3 a.m just working on cakes and we got paid and everything, but we were literally there like overnight just making cakes. And I don't think that's really legal. I don't know. Like, but we were, were still paid? kids. I was underage. Oh. And so we literally worked until like 3 a.m. And we'd also work like, one time I worked a double for like 14 hours or something. And I was like 17. Baskin Robbins, Starbucks, you have a lawsuit coming your but way. But it was kind of fun. Signed, read it, and weep. <laughs> Only got Spencer paid $7.50 though. And Matt. Real. But yeah, Baskin was interesting. Starbucks to me was more fun. Did first you ever have like a crazy customer ever? Oh, oh definitely. Like, okay. When like when COVID first hit, okay, Oklahoma was kind of like it feels like another country because like we <laughs> only had one week of a mask mandate. Uh huh. Because Oklahoma is like, you know, Oklahoma's Oklahoma's Oklahoma. Is Oklahoma yeah. yeah. So we had like one week of a mask mandate, but like everything besides essential business is closed down, obviously. Mm -hmm. But Baskin was essential somehow. Okay. And so we literally had like a line out the door and there were only two of us working because our boss didn't know it was going to be that busy. Like line out the door, like drive through line was, was it one of all those the Baskin way around Robbins the connected to Duncan? No, we literally had one Duncan in all of like my county. 
because it was Oklahoma. Why the hell was ice cream considered like essential? I don't know because I guess it was food. So it was so busy and this guy got so mad because we ran out of containers. It was so busy we ran out of containers to like for the take home. Mm -hmm. We had like this court Mm -hmm. and he yelled at us for 30 minutes and insisted we give him like a free scoop of ice cream or something which I told him we couldn't which I could. I could put it in the system but I didn't want to. Yeah. So then I eventually called my boss and then I guess I just had to give it to him. It was weird. But we got yelled at for a really long time. Um... I have so many crazy customer service stories, especially with like customers. This one time we were closed. Like we were literally closed. Um, If you don't know about Safari or like Google, they're both like real things you can use to check the business hours of operation for like different places you can go to, like, I don't know, Starbucks or the store. Um, I guess this lady thought that showing up at 1130 PM when we were closed at Starbucks um, doing like a deep clean was a was an opportune time to order a drink oh yeah perfect but she started like she drove up to the window screaming at first of all she was at the already um, the energy already she was at the speaker and i had my headset on still because that's how like we would communicate back and oh yeah yeah so like i was i was like talking to one of my coworkers in the back asking them to bring out like the i think it was the bleach spray or it wasn't bleach spray it was a spray to like clean out the ice bin and um i hear this lady at the drive-thru window um like talking into the thing she's like hello hello are you there and i was like hi ma'am unfortunately it is 11 30 and we're closed and she was like there's no way to sound the third i was like ma'am it's like 11 30 we are yeah. actually closed like i'm really sorry i cannot help you all the machines are shut down we're doing a deep clean she continued to drive up to the window where you pick up your order screaming at the window and like banging on the window with her hand you know what i found out this lady did for work what like she donated like food Like, she was actually, like, she donated food to the, like, less fortunate, had her own, like, huge fundraising company, hold, like, a whole organization to give back to the less fortunate. And um, she was banging on our Starbucks window at 11.30 p.m. talking about, where's my drink? Where's my drink? Also, some lady, oh, remember that kid I told you about who, like, tried to stab me in Catholic school? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, his mom was, like, equally as, like, Woohoo! Like a little cray cray as him, um, and told my manager that I was putting rat poison in her bacon goudas. Like, girl, be for real. And I was like, Where would you get rat poison? First of all, I need. Where's the proof? Right. I was like, first of all, I need this job. You're still here. You're still living. I'm in university. Second of all, out of like, why would why would I take time out of my precious day to open a rat poison packet and pour it in your food? That's like a TV like show I, line. Like, where did she pull that out like, from? Wh- and no, and then like, she, girl, you could have come up with something better than that. Whenever she came in, it was like she made it like required of me to like not required of me, but like my manager was like, we don't want problems with her, so just like stand in a corner when she comes in, so she sees you're not touching anything. And then eventually, it just got to a point where I was like, I'm doing my damn job, and I'm not gonna stand in a corner. Like, this is ridiculous. If she has a problem, she can say it to my face, or someone else here has to say something. Yeah. Because now she's getting in the way of me getting my work done, yeah. and like I'm not gonna sit here and not do anything and let my coworker run two bars at once because one lady out of the 25 customers we have in here said I put rat poison in her food. Like, it's not my fault that she's batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, and then my manager ended up talking to her um, because, like, I, I kind of went off. And my manager was like, look, if you keep on doing this with Spencer, I'm going to have to ban you from the Starbucks and rest assured every other Starbucks in this district. So, like, you can either she's come and, that. like, get your order and leave or you can keep causing problems and we can, like, see where this goes. Never had a problem again. That's so true. I feel like there there were always like problem customers, but we were supposed to like fix the issue and just like not be there. What, uh, my whole thing was like, I'm a 16, 17 year old working at Starbucks. Yeah. Why the hell am I supposed to sizzle down a middle aged crazy person's temper? Like, why am I? First of all, you have a line of people that just came before you and there is a line of people after you. You're screaming at me, if anything, I should be the one screaming. Yeah. Get it? I'm screaming. Mm-hmm. The pocket. Sorry. But I should be the one screaming. Like, you literally just came here and you ordered your food and your drink. And I'm so sorry it's taking a while for you to get it. But in case you haven't noticed, ma'am, there are 30 people in our cafe. And there's a line wrapped around this building outside of cars because they are also ordering shit at the drive through So why don't you mind your business and sit the hell down? Because you know right. what? When I was in the third grade, I learned something called patience. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that, you can just shut the hell up because no one has time for you now. Thank you. Bye. I'm so sorry. This is actually making 
making me exactly. heated. Exactly. I'm like yelling at the people watching the podcast. Like you guys. But like, I'm sure most of y'all are great. No. If yeah. you're, on, I'm saying most of y'all. If anyone's watching us, I don't think they're like Crazy. the people yelling at us at Starbucks. Yeah. No. Or I, if you are, I hope you learned something. Love you. It made me heated talking about the whole like customers being rude and this and the third. Um, but it also got me thinking about how I was like stalked while working at Starbucks too. Oh God. Um, and there was actually a man that came in one time and I was alone. Again, I, I was a minor too. I was alone working in the cafe um, and it was during like a holiday season. So not a lot of people were coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people were away. I think it was for 4th of July and in New Jersey, everyone goes to the shore. So there was oh, no gotcha, one gotcha. coming to Starbucks except this one guy and he comes oh, into the store and he orders a drink, I'm alone, and he plops down a newspaper in front of me and he's like, do you think this is the real date? And I was like, um, I don't know, like we run off, I guess like of the biblical calendar, like we can never really be sure. And he was like, I like the way you think. This man <laughs> went into like a full 20 minute tangent about how like the government is listening to us, about how like he has this like magic rock that he walks around with everywhere because the government tries to get into his brain through his microwaves, radio ra waves or like radio signals. Yeah. Also telling me that like, um, like his great, great, great grandparents like founded the town I was working in and that like the government talks to us through the trees. Um, oh, real. Yeah. Like real. But then he kept <laughs> coming back in. Cause like, what am I supposed to say to that? Like no. I'm supposed to be like, you're batshit crazy. No, I was like, oh, you okay. You just have to agree. Like, okay, cool. I'm like, yeah, no. So he, he uh -huh. kept coming back in and kept talking about it. And one of the things he kept, like, he would refer to this as well, is that, like, we all live in a simulation. And Ooh. earlier I brought up that we were going to be talking about this. But what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think we actually live in a simulation? Okay. So when you put that on the, just so you know, he has a schedule. Spensua has a schedule. And, like, this is all set up, like, really great. When you put that on there, I was wondering what you meant by that. Like, we're in a simulation, like, in what sense? Oh, like, in what sense? Okay, yeah. so you know how, like, um, so, like, in my head, when I think of, like, simulation, I always think about how, I believe it was Elon Musk, and he mentioned oh, how, he like, would. we have virtual reality, right? Uh-huh. Like, it's the idea that if we now have VR, like, we are able to make VR, who says that y years from now, we're going to have it highly realistic VR kind of adapting us into like a, like a simulation world. Yeah. But if there is a possibility of that becoming real and as we see technology advance, there is a great possibility that that is real, that we can cre create that type of technology. Who says we aren't already living in that technology? And we're just so happen, like we just so happen to just like be making VR in VR. That's super interesting because honestly, if that was happening, I would just go along with it. Like, but how I feel like know? I can't control it. Like, have you ever seen the movie The Matrix? No, but I have seen her. You know what the AI? Sorry, that's not really related. I thought there oh, was like some you, connection gonna, like, in my brain, Megan, but like, I'm like, um, her, her. Or mm. like, I was like, you've seen the, her music video Ooh. too? I was like, okay, you have seen her. Yes, it was giving VR natural realness. Girl, no, the AI one. Oh, okay. Here's my thing. I get scared, not scared, but like again to like, I don't know if I would call this an existential crisis, but like I sit here and I'm like, I feel like I'm cognitive, like fully. Like I, I'm thinking right now, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking of things. But what if, like, I'm not, though? What if I'm programmed to think that, like, it just leads me down this really weird rabbit hole of, like, what if I'm programmed to think that I'm cognitive so I can go about my everyday life, like, in the simulation for someone else? Or if I am fully cognitive, am I the only one that's in the simulation and, mm -hmm. like, I somehow am in one designed for myself? And yeah. if I am, does that mean everyone else is a part of the simulation? Because then I start thinking about it and I'm like, I'm cognitive. I know you're cognitive. But like when people are, when people say shit like, oh, I I'm fully cognitive of what damn, like I keep saying that word. Like like is there another word for cognitive? <laughs> aware. Like I'm fully aware, I guess you would say, right? Yeah. You can say that, but how do I know? You're not programmed to say that. That's true. 
Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. <laughs> We've had a great. <laughs> like you're like, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He knows too I much. I feel like. And the podcast. <laughs> I He's feel gotten too deep into. Time to do the memory swipe. What if that's deja vu? You start to notice too much and you reset. That's so interesting because I saw a video about deja vu and they were trying to explain it scientifically, but no girl. It's like, I don't know how to say this, but like I have the weirdest like deja vu moments where like I imagine like a popcorn machine in a bank that my mom went to when I was like eight. Mm -hmm. It's like, girl, why would that be like? Why would that be your deja vu? They say it's like your brain like skips a beat or something. Like, girl, I do that every day. Like, There's I don't no get deja way. vu that often. I, I actually, in high school, when I took a physics class, we're gonna get back to the simulation, but I just had oh, to yeah. throw this out there. But when I was in high school for my physics class, we had to like basically create our own theory. And I made a theory about time travel um, using, I believe it is, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it can only be transferred. So when I was taking physics, I discovered essentially like if you were to travel through time, the amount of energy it would take to travel through time is a supernova, like a star exploding. Um, mm, and even when that happens, you're turned into energy. Like you can't, your physical body cannot survive a supernova. However, because energy cannot be destroyed, my whole thing was, what if deja vu is like a billion trillion years from now when our sun explodes, our residual energy back in time? We just like reset. And because our residual energy is still here, we just go about our business over and over and over again. But let's say you've lived a lot of lives. Oh, and that you I don't have a lot in. of energy left. Like oh. your energy is depleting, girl. Like it's like it's being transferred. It's it's transferring out. Eventually, you don't exist. Like you're not remade. You're, you don't travel in time with the rest of the energy. Then you get deja vu because I'm sitting here in an alternate reality talking to someone else that isn't you. And I'm like, wait, I feel like I've lived this before. Girl, you have. That's a lie. <laughs> um, Process. So I barely it. graduated high school, so I'm like still thinking about all of this. <laughs> I did. Okay, I met with a witch. Okay, you met with a witch. And she's actually, she was a good witch. But we talked about like Wait, past lives and like, stuff. Uh, like, she was chill. I loved her. Her energy was great. Like she was like Wiccan? Or? she's. Just, I don't know what you mean by that. She's a witch. Okay. So she was a good witch. And she literally was like having us like talk to spirits and stuff. But that's like not even related. Okay. What I was going to say is like past life she was talking about I never had like thought about it but it makes so much sense that like we have these like past lives and things and are like because afterlife is so weird I like barely think about it because it's kind of scary oh yeah, and it's no. just like how could anyone know if I were to just sit here and try to think about the afterlife like when we are done with this podcast I'm gonna have to like never think about that I'm not gonna I can't think about this yeah. for about a month because if I keep thinking about it I'm done yeah. But you guys were talking no, about the exactly. afterlife? Yeah. Okay. With one of the, one of the witches, we literally were one? like, yeah, with one of the witches. You were with multiple? Girl, I did this like weird TV show. It was a whole thing. Oh. So how many witches were there? Multiple. It was like different days, but there was a good oh. witch and she like helped us like was talk to spirits and stuff. I, can I be actually a bad don't witch. know. Like maybe the other one didn't specify, but this one was like very specific and she was like, I'm a good witch. Like, don't worry. Okay. But yeah, one of them was having us like go through like past life things oh, like I a guess. past life progression yeah did which they like I didn't do get where to do like you close your eyes and it's like i didn't get to do it no i watched my friend do it but then he had a breakdown so then like then we didn't get to mine it wasn't in the cut That's selfish so like sorry like your friend really didn't have to do that no yeah. i'm kidding i feel really bad for your friend no it was something it was interesting but i'm like sorry. super interested in that now because that's so like like people being like old souls and stuff i always heard that and i was like what the what the heck does that mean what does that mean yeah you have an old but now soul. i get it yeah but now i get it you do yeah, because it's like you have all of these like you, past, past lives, lives. And like, your experiences and stuff. I'm like, maybe I was homophobic in my past life. And so they had to make me gay in Oklahoma. Like you know, it's my lesson learned. So like, that's your we'll karma. see you next time. Yeah. But guess what? If you weren't gay in Oklahoma, you wouldn't be gay in an LA. That's true. No, let's be real. If I was straight and you were straight. I'd we wouldn't be, working, be anywhere. I feel I'd like we would be like right now, like an actual, I'd be working on a car right now in some automotive shop yeah. somewhere like hating my life no if i didn't have all the trauma of childhood i don't think i'd be on the internet oh absolutely not yeah that was like that was such an outlet it's like i feel like not always but i feel like a lot of people on the internet people are like oh my god they're crazy like if they see enough of us like on my spam people are like are you okay and i'm like 
Never. No. Like you have you watched like the videos? Like if like, you know. Are you good? Not no. really. No. But like that's okay. That's how we post. That's, that's, that's why that's we do what we, we do. And that's that's how we get money by yeah. not being okay. Exactly. And it's okay not to be okay. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Not Okay? Sorry, that's not even like related, but like N- Not Okay. The one on Hulu. The one about the where the protagonist was supposed to be hated. Because she's, like, really problematic. She's, like, an influencer. I for, kind of forgot already. Are you talking about the show with the girl from It? She's really And Gen she can, Z. like, blow up people's heads? Not at all. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> like, she was the Gen off Z the rails. One. She was the one where she was, like, really Gen Z. But then by the time the movie came out, it was, like, dated. And it wasn't Gen Z anymore. Oh, it was just, where like, she oh, was this like, is really cringy. Yeah. Nope. I think the show I was talking about was on Netflix. And it's called I'm Not Okay With This. And this girl literally blows up people's oh, heads. Oh, I remember that. That and End of the Effing World was so good. Yeah. But they canceled all of them, didn't they? Yeah, because Netflix, Netflix can't have... Netflix doesn't like queer... Sorry, I can't say that. Yeah, we can. Uh. Netflix, me and Matt are going to make a list of TV shows we want back on air. And if you don't do it, you are officially homophobic. I don't think they could even do it anymore. Like, I feel like the actors and everyone's all said and done. Like, they're just done. Like, Look it was, at like, what you've years. done, Netflix. It's too late. It is too it can't be late. Fixed. It cannot be fixed. Are you happy with yourself? I yourselves? unsubscribed. Oh, I think I'm, I already said that like twice. I'm still subscribed. In this past hour. Yeah, no. And it's okay to say it because Matt's un- uh, yeah. unsubscribed and I also said it. Also, I got up early, so this feels like two different days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel out of it, too. No, that's true. We just like drink coffee and we're here now. Yeah, I also that's have to. That's so like Hobby Lobby sign. Like, I can't. I feel like walking. But it's true. Like. I feel like star- like Starbucks. The Live Laugh Loves had it right. I feel like. Like, we need coffee. We need coffee? Yeah. Oh, well, I feel like I, I, I get migraines now if I don't have coffee. Yeah. No, I can't do it. After Starbucks. When you worked at Starbucks, sorry, going back to that again. But, like, no, when okay. you worked at Starbucks, did you, like, get a really unhealthy obsession with, like, caffeine? Um, Because the free hell's, drinks. Yeah, I did. The free drinks. Did you ever mark out your drinks? I honestly forgot. I feel like sometimes I did, but we got in trouble for taking, like, the expired food. Because there was food. Starbucks is good about, like, marking all the food and stuff. It wasn't the expired food, but like by like a day or so, you know, yeah. like that's in the back. Mm-hmm. We would like heat that up, but then our manager found out and we got in trouble. Anyways. Like that's ridiculous. Okay. Like. But it's like, girl, who cares? First of all. Again, Don't be stingy. We were, right. Don't we, be catty. We were like, let underpaid. us have it. Yeah, come on. Um, it's, a, the least it's a sandwich. You can, the least you can do is let me heat up let a me panini. Eat. Yeah. And get a drink Tomato and mozzarella. call it a day. Like, you're ridiculous. Ugh. Yeah. You know what? If we're living in a simulation, actually, you know how There's I know no we're living. not. Yeah, I know we're because not because we would be getting paid better. We would one, we'd be getting paid better, and why the hell would I put myself in a simulation where I had to work at Starbucks for three years and get underpaid? That's how I know we're not living in one. You know what? You need to watch Severance then. Speaking of simulation, that'll literally, it'll make you manic probably. I can't do that then. Wait, but do it. It's so is worth it, gonna, it. Is it gonna be like that movie with uh, Leonardo it makes DiCaprio you think so Inception? Hard. It's honestly, I'm not going to say it's better because I don't want like to like pick sides like that. But uh. honestly, Severance, it makes you think so hard because it's like a mystery the whole time. And I'm not going to give anything away, but like it really makes you think about like, what are they thinking? Like, how do they do this? Because it's kind of like where their mind is disconnected and they like don't know what's going on on the other side. Mm-hmm. So like they picked this life for themselves. But like, it's like they're two separate people now. Oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? And so like imagine being like a different person and you can't change what's on either side. So it's like one of their like people chose this life for them and they're like working at this job that they hate. Yeah. Basically. Uh Uh-huh. And they hate it so bad, but they can't change it because their other person doesn't know how bad it is. (gasps) So the whole time there, it's like a battle of them like figuring this out. No way. But it's really good. I feel like if you like that, you would definitely like, I wish they still had it. The OA. Have you seen that? The what? The OA. The OA. Yeah, there were two seasons. It got canceled. I wish it was back. It's basically about like you. This girl like, reappears after being kidnapped. She was kidnapped. Um, she comes back, and you end up finding out that she was kidnapped by the scientist who takes people who have like died and come back to life. And she had died and girl. come back to life. And when she came back to life, she came back, I believe, blind, but also like. It was like there was a new form of life instilled within her. Like she could play violin really well. She was like a prodigy, Ooh. this down the third. And you end up finding out that like certain people who die and come back to life, they're like given a, a coded message somehow. And he kidnapped all of them to figure out the coded message. And 
Did you ever see the like edit on um, TikTok of those, the song like Pumped Up Kicks and those people, Phyllis from The Office is in it. And it's like, all the other kids with the pumped up kicks. Yeah. And they're like moving their hands around. Wait, no, I just said, yeah. Okay. But I'll well, pretend. Now I just embarrassed myself. It's okay. Um, no, but I trust. Oh, thank you. You know what? That's why our friendship yeah, that's is important. Mm. Anyway, that felt that felt like a good hand. We held hands for those yeah, of for you at a home. Second. Yeah, don't do that. It's gay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyways, no, but like they no, do these like yeah. they do these like hand references, and you find out that these hand references transfer your consciousness into a different reality. So like she ends up like at the end of the first episode, she ends up transferring herself to a new reality and a new consciousness, and she can kind of like. I can't like get too deep into it, but it's really good and you should watch it because even though I don't think we might be living in a simulation, I do think that we're all like consciously connected in some way. And oh, yeah. that's why manifesting works. There's so much I don't know about like spirituality and stuff. And I get scared like when people talk too much about the afterlife because I feel like I don't want to bother with the afterlife because I can't really, in my opinion, I don't think I can change anything. So I don't bother like thinking about like, where am I going to go after it? Like I'm dealing with too much already. Like why deal with why like deal with that right now? The far, far future that's like, or I mean, who knows? Could be any time, but like. I mean, I don't think you're gonna. Die not that anytime. I should put that into existence. You're not like, gonna die anytime soon. Yeah. But like, I enjoy crystals and stuff, and it's super interesting. Meditation. I haven't, but I need to. I literally yesterday, I don't know what it was, but I felt so off going home, and I sat down in my apartment and I meditated. Sometimes I just need to breathe. It didn't make me feel better. Oh, never mind. No, yeah, I ended up running like four miles on the treadmill. True. That made me feel better. That's good though. I literally been trying to run on the treadmill, but I only get like two miles. You'll get there. Okay. I believe, okay. I believe in you. I used to run cross country for two days. Two days? Yes. And I then I had to quit because I twisted my ankle. I was a boy scout for a week. <gasps> and then I quit because I thought it was like the mighty B and I would like get all these badges. And then I found out that you actually had to do shit to get your yeah. badges. So I was like, I'm not doing that. For real. I was like, I'm not like I'm not gonna start a campfire to get a campfire badge. Like just give me the damn badge. When you were a kid, did everyone just like break their ankle? Or like oh, twist no. their like why was that just normal? Like I would go for a walk and like trip over a stick and suddenly I'm like to pieces. Really? I no. mean I like scratched my cornea three times. I didn't know that was actually a thing because my grandma always said that. Instead of like don't scratch your eye, if we were like picking around our eyes, she'd be like, Don't scratch your cornea. Like girl, you could have said I. I once I once had like a little like pebble. I was riding my bike, shoot up and hit my eye and then it fell out. Thank God. That's some universe shit. But it That's like scary. scratched the inside of my cornea and thank God I like went to the eye doctor. They gave me these special eye drops that I had to use like every day. And it was kind of like an antibiotic for my eye. So do you get pink eye or what? No. Ever? I've never? never. Never. Did you grow up with? Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should definitely know this and you probably have said it, but so don't get mad at me. But did you have siblings? No. No. I was supposed That's to have I a thought. twin. I ate that bitch up in the womb. Real. Mm. Oh. oh, maybe I shouldn't say real. Sorry. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, but what I was going to say is I had three I siblings. I ate it up. I ate it up in the you womb. You ate that. I ate that in the womb for real, for real. Eating up. Mm -hmm. All right. So I had three siblings. Oh. And I feel like when you have siblings, you get all of the th you get all the funs. You get the flu, the colds, and the pink eye. Okay. But also, I think we just like we were really gross as kids. Like we would go to the arcade and like rub our eyeballs, and it's like, duh. Like of course yeah. we got pink eye. I got it like twice, and I hated eye drops as a kid. I knew a kid who had pink eye. Not you say that like it's like some rare. Is it? I've never had it. But that's because my mom. Real talk. So my mom took me to a petting zoo and I was afraid of the sheep. And I said, mommy, I don't want to go in by the sheep. You knew. And she said, you need to go in there because I want a cute photo. Went in the petting zoo, pet a sheep, got ringworm on my thigh. So. It was the universe telling you. It was right. No, yeah. It was the universe. You had intuition. Right. Or my right. twin. Sometimes I'm convinced oh, that the twin I ate in the womb like speaks to me. Like. I would. I would buy it. I would too. Or maybe it's just like different personalities that I forge for every new people or right. every new person I meet. Cause I love to satisfy. And the only person I can't satisfy is myself. That's real. Well, we covered a lot more than I thought we would today. Didn't we? Yeah. Did you enjoy your time? I did. Why don't you tell everyone your socials before oh, we go? You can follow me, Matt the person or Matt Taylor, probably most places. Do you have any like upcoming projects you're doing? Not really. I don't do much. You can watch me just live <laughs> life and live life, live life, love. Yeah. 
live, laugh, love. Literally. As you should. Nice. And remember, everyone, if you would like to watch this, um, you need to go to the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe because they're helping me with this podcast and they deserve the world because everyone here is absolutely freaking amazing. Um, and also, if you want to watch it, Spotify also allows you to uh, watch podcasts now, which is super interesting. Something yeah. I didn't know, but this just in. We just found that Real. out. And just for future reference, if you guys want me to have anyone else on the show, just comment in the comment section of this video. Again, it's past your bedtime on YouTube. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Have a great rest of your day and don't do anything illegal. <gasps> or do. Okay. Or no, don't actually. That part. Love it. Ah!